Hey guys, welcome back to my colorful country life. Today I have a, another lovely surprise gift box to share with you all. Now the box does have my address written on the top, so I have flipped it open already, so I'm not flashing that to everyone, but I haven't had a uh, proper look inside just yet, so we'll do that together. Um, this has been very kindly and generously sent to me by Lawrence King Publishing, who are the publishers for Joanna Bassford's Secret Garden. And this was in celebration of the 10 year anniversary for that book. So let's just move this over to the side and we'll go and have a look and see what's in the box. So just push that over. The first thing we have here is this beautiful box from the Tea Makers of London. And it's got this little card sticking out, the Tea Makers of London. That's their uh, website there. Um, beautiful stationery too. Um, hey there, we really hope you enjoy trying our favourite teas. The chamomile is especially good for snuggling up for an evening colouring session. Love, April and the Tea Makers team. Now, my husband loves a chamomile at night, so I may have to share that one with him. Um, oh, and they've given me a discount code for 10% off your next order, and that is Colourful10, and that is Colourful with a U, and I'll pop that um, up on the screen and also in the description box too. Now I am a big tea drinker. I do usually have one next to me while I'm coloring, but I've been out to the shops today, so I have a coffee <laughs> instead. Um, so I am really looking forward to sitting down and trying these. It is pretty miserable weather today, so perfect for a cup of tea and a good book. So let's open this up. We'll, oh, just push it. Lovely quality packaging. Oh, these look big. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven in the box. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, nine, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, twelve is more of an even number. What have we got? We've got um, Earl Grey Supreme, two Earl Grey Supremes, English Breakfast, another English Breakfast, Jasmine Green Tea. Jasmine Silver Needle. Are these? Oh, it's a tea bag. I wasn't sure if it was um, loose leaf. This exceptional jasmine infused white tea has a refreshing and mild flavour with deliciously sweet floral notes. Chinese white tea with jasmine flowers. That sounds lovely. What have we got here? Bora Bora Fruity Tea. Japanese Sencha. Refreshing peppermint leaves. Yeah, I think they're all tea bags. 200 mils at 100 degrees. Brew for three minutes. So you let it sit for three minutes before drinking it. Jasmine Dragon Pearls. This sounds... By hand rolling the tender tea buds into small pearls. That sounds interesting. I wonder what that one looks like. Um, chamomile Blossoms. I think that one's for my husband. I do like chamomile too, but... He loves his chamomile at night and invigorating lemongrass ginger. They sound lovely. How wonderful. Some fun flavors here that I can't wait to try. Like I said before, it's perfect weather for a cup of tea today. So um, I might try some of these out later. It's like 11 degrees here today and it's about to pour down with rain. We're supposed to get like 40 mils of rain today and a thunderstorm. Not quite the Aussie summer that was predicted. Um, see if I can get this back together. Oh, there we go. Okay, so next we have a blender pencil. It says blender 5426. And this is the Stedler Design Journey range. Um, we might open this up and give it a try. It says non-pigmented wax-based pencil, perfect for blending and softening edges of graphite and colored pencil artwork, wood from certified sustainably managed forests. So I'm not one um, to use a blender pencil personally. I like to burnish my pages um, with the lighter pencil that I'm using. So there's no real opportunity to use one of these on my pages, but 
I can happily do a little demo for you all um, and for me as well <laughs> to see how it performs as well. So it might come in handy um, and maybe for creating a softer look to my pages if I use a lighter hand and it don't burnish um, instead of being so heavy handed like I usually am. Um, and next we've got a set of um, Stedler again 12 metallic color pencils and also in the design journey range and we've got a little swatch of color down the bottom here we will do our own swatches in a moment I think um, black and white black and white oh it's it's showing that it performs on both black and white paper I'm like where is the black and white in here um, so it performs on both black and white types of paper we might try that out in a moment um, so it says Coloured pencil for shimmery metallic effects, a soft lead giving high coverage, adds shine and highlights, particularly on dark paper. Okay. Uh, for drawing fine lines and shading large areas in sparkling colours. So let's open it up. You know I love sparkly things. Do I need my craft knife? Or does it just slip open? It opens here. Ah, there we go. That was easy. Easier than I expected. Let's put the rubbish this way. Okay, so it's a flip top lid. Oh, we've got some sparkly barrels. Hexagonal shape. They're very light, very light to hold. Um, still a metallic, it says here. And there are no names color names or numbers or anything on the pencils so I won't swatch them just yet let's see what else is in the box first and we can do some swatching at the end so Next, we also have another pencil set in the Design Journey range. This is a 48 set of coloured pencils. We have all our little um, swatches down at the bottom here. And it looks like a fairly decent range of colours as well, considering this is quite a small uh, pencil set. Um, high quality coloured pencils, soft lead. Soft lead, so I'm assuming wax based. Uh, for a wide range of dry techniques in bright colours, highly pigmented colours that are easy to blend. Just what I like to hear. <laughs> um, now, let's open this box up. Is it going to be as easy as the last one? Does it open there? Or does it open there? Here, I think. Oh. Try not to stab myself here. Yeah, I think it's supposed to open from here. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I need scissors. This could go very badly right now. Well, let's slide. Let's see if it'll just slide. There we go. Gosh, I'm making this look hard. There we go. <laughs> now it should just slide off. We hope. Maybe. Oh gosh, I'm struggling. No, it's not going to slide off. Ah! Whew, that was hard work. Now, I don't own any of the Design Journey range, although I have heard of them. I've never really seen them uh, used before, so they are, they are a completely new pencil to me. Um, what is this? This just... Um, I think this is just a different color ranges. Yeah. Pastel pencils, that sounds good. Watercolor pencils, tinted watercolor pencils, and full watercolor pencils. I wonder what the difference between watercolor, full watercolor, and tinted. Okay, tinted, hint of graphite. Two completely different effects with one pencil. That sounds interesting. If you have these, let me know. Let me know what they're like. Um, so I will print off a, a swatch chart in a moment and we can take a closer look at these colours. Um, do they have... 
these are really light too just like the metallic pencils so they're hexagonal in shape they're quite thin i'd say maybe maybe similar in size to a prismacolor barrel um just in different shape of course hexagonal there are no color names or numbers on here um i don't know if this art number here um, i can see it's different in each one so i don't know if that matches up if that is a pencil number um so we'll swatch these out in a minute i'll just put them to the side for now because there are some more things in the box to have a look at so next in the box we have this Stedler sharpener um, it has a flip top lid here um, it is a two hole sharpener um, to fit your different size pencils and the lid here lifts upwards so you can empty out your pencil shavings from the container. I love a sharpener that has a container because um, I am upstairs. There's no bin down here. I have to run downstairs to empty out my sharpeners. So, um, and I really like the color too. It matches um, the aesthetic of my coloring space. We have our lucky last is the 10th anniversary edition of Secret Garden. So um this was gifted to me this box was gifted to me to celebrate the 10th anniversary release of secret garden by joanna basford now i did purchase a few of these books for my 20,000 subscriber giveaway um but i never purchased one for myself so i do have the normal secret garden i've got a couple of copies and the miniature secret garden um so i figured i'd just color in them and i wouldn't get this copy um, and I'm glad I didn't because now I have it <laughs> and there is a page um, which is new to this limited special edition that I was eyeing off when I flipped through the book um, when I did my giveaway video and I really did want a copy of this book so I could colour these pages and it was this uh, pull out here so both sides have actually caught my eye and we may need to do a colour along I really love these pages um, let me know if you are interested in a colour along if you've got this book with either side of this pullout, but I am leaning more. Look at that. This is quite busy though. We've got the total houses. We have all these little flowers. These could be like little light sources here. This beautiful ornate sort of gilded border. And then on the flip side, we have these florals here. So this is the one that I'm leaning more towards. These beautiful florals. Um, both are beautiful images. And they might take a while though. This this one looks not quite as busy as the other one, but I am colouring I'm colouring this page at the moment. I've got a whip right next to me here from Magical Jungle, which is another page of florals. And it is taking me forever. So this could take a minute, but if you are interested in a colour along on either this page or that one, I do prefer this one, I think. I think, maybe, I don't know. They both look like fun. This one sort of reminds me of um, the back of World of Flowers. There's a page in the back of World of Flowers that has this sort of border around a house. It gives me that sort of vibe. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is quickly print out a swatch sheet and we'll take a closer look at um, the 48 colour set. And then we'll also swatch out the metallic colours as well. And I'll see if I can get some... Um, black paper that we can swatch onto as well i know i've got some black watercolor paper so i'll just see if i've got some normal black paper um yeah so i'm just going to print out my swatch sheet just on normal copy paper i just use the reflex brand and nothing fancy um so i will see how they feel to me but the best test is going to be to use them directly in the coloring book so we may try to find something small in this book we can color as well with the pencils as a quick test so let me just move this out of the way and i'll print off a swatch chart all right so i have printed out my swatch sheet and i'm just going to chuck a notebook underneath for some cushioning um, i've also got some black paper here as well for when we do the metallic pencils and um, so this is just normal copy paper like I mentioned earlier and for the black paper I'm just using uh, this here. Okay I'll just zoom you guys in a little bit. Um, now there are no pencil numbers on the barrels. Um, I don't normally swatch out the white but I will just for the purposes of swatching it out and seeing what it looks like. Um, now I always pre-sharpen my pencils. Um, before I do my swatches just in case there's some coating on it so I'm actually going to use this new sharpener and see what it's like 
and start now. There we go. It's a beautiful point, actually, really sharp point. Can you see that? Quite a short, sharp point. Um, so I won't sharpen them all on screen, but I will do them all off screen um, to make sure there's no coating left on. So this is the white. And it's probably not going to show at all. There are always like slight differences with every white pencil though. So it doesn't really show, but it is there. And let's go on with the next colour. Thank you. 
Okay, so there are our colors. Now, like I said earlier, great range of colors here. Got everything you could need in a smaller set. Now, um, the, they weren't as opaque and pigmented as I first thought they were going to be. Uh, that could be the paper though. Like I said, it is just cheap copy paper. Um, we will have to put them to test in the book first. Uh, they are quite soft though, so I do imagine they're going to be easy to blend. Uh, there was a minimal amount of pencil dust, so uh, not much mess made on the page. Now you might have noticed a little bit of tip breakage, but that was due to how sharp I got that point and not the durability of the lead. So it does feel very solid. It's not going to break or crumble easily, not like a Prismacolor would. Um, so I think what we'll do now is I'm just going to swatch the uh the 12 set of metallics i'll swatch them down here and then as we're going i will also swatch them here on the black paper as well so i will zoom you back in So there are our 12 metallic pencils swatched out. Now they are more of a matte metallic than a shiny metallic. And um, they do shine though. So I'll lift it up so you can see. And hopefully I can catch the light here and show you the shine. I can see, especially with these two here, 
um, the glitter particles as I was colouring them and in the blue as well you can see really well. They do seem to show a little bit better maybe on the black paper. The shine. There we go. Hopefully you can see that shininess. Um, they felt just the same as the normal 48 set, so um, the same softness. So sometimes you can get metallic pencils and they're a little bit scratchy. These weren't scratchy at all. They were quite um, smooth to colour. So what we might do is grab our secret garden and I'll move some of this stuff out of my way. I'm running out of room here. <laughs> One second. So let me just zoom you guys out again and we might have a flip through and see if we can find something small to colour. Okay, so... Um, is that the last page? Yeah. That's not exactly a small picture, but we could colour part of that to try the pencils out. That one I want to do is a full colour along or the inside, if people want to see it. That's a possibility. One's a little bit smaller. Possible. Uh, I just want something little to try them out. Mm -mm -mm. Um, maybe one of these. What colours have I got? This being really good is an autumn page, I think. We've got some really good browns and greens and oranges. Um, even this one. So anything small. They're all fairly detailed, aren't they? Um, maybe even this one. That one, the same as that one. Oh no, they're a little bit, a little bit different. Maybe we'll do this one. Okay, let me just try and flatten this out. Okay, so like I said before, these pencils are brand new to me, so I do get. A lot of questions about how I come up with my color combos. Well, now you're going to get a first-hand look at that right now. Um, what I'm going to do is just grab some scrap paper and I'll scribble down some color combos. So we've just got the leaves, um, the flowers and a watering can here. So I'll do all the leaves the same color, all the flowers the same color, I think, and then the watering can as well. Now, um, what color palette do we want? Let's see what colors we have. Um, where's my other swatch card? Okay, so, um, I don't know if I'm going to use the metallics maybe on the watering can. I'm just going to put that aside because I don't want to use greys on my flowers or my leaves. Now, they are quite small, so this is going to be like a two or three pencil combo, which, um, if you've been here for a while, you'll know that is very unusual for me. Um, so do I want to go bright? Do I want to go muted? What do I want to do? So these, these three would look good together. Can you see that? These three colors would look good together. And then these three would too. So dark, medium, and light. You could also go dark, medium, light, dark, medium, light. Um, try and I'm, trying, I'm going to try and fit three colours because I like to have that transition from a highlight shade, a shadow shade, and then a medium colour. So what do I want? I think I want these three. I am leaning towards these three. So what colour will my flowers be? These colours will go well, but I don't really want brown flowers. What's going to go with these three? We might have to. Okay, so if I do these three for the leaf, we may go... So sort of a pinky red. So it might be that, that, and that, maybe. 
maybe let's try one of our leaf colors here first with these three now they don't have any names and i did put them they did fall out when i was lifting up the tray so there's a tray on the bottom and then the oh, if i can reach it top tray here so they did fall out so they're not in the correct order that i swatched them in so let me just scribble this out see if i've got them right so i think we've got this one here i'll just zoom you back in So, for our darkest colour in our leaf, and then this for our mid-tone maybe. Mm, could do this the two, couldn't I? Maybe if there's some really small leaves, at least for the highlight. Is that a work? Do I like it? I don't know. Would I prefer? Um, the leaves don't have to be green. Leaves do not have to be green. Because this, this and this would look good together too. Can I do a blue leaf? Can I bring myself to do a blue leaf? Let's have a look. We'll swatch it out. This is sort of a aqua kind of colour. that match yeah that's an idea um what else was i looking at these greens so maybe this dark green here which is where is that i think it's this one is that the is that that one i think no that's that one hang on this is our one This one kind of reminds me of the Prisma Apple Green. And then, do we have a cream? Could you use a pale yellow? Or this green. See, that, that yellow there is sort of a yellowy green. That could actually look good with that combo too. Um, let's try this one. See, I like that too. I think with the colour range we have here, and hang on, I'm going to have to zoom you out again. With the colour range that we have, I really like this combo, but I think this one might be a little bit more versatile. I don't know about that really bright green colour though. So one second. Let's see what this looks like. Dark. They're very similar, those two colours, aren't they? That was these two. What if I try that yellow yeah, green, that sort of chartreuse colour? Okay, so that's pretty too. There's not enough space for all these colours. Um, I have to cut it down to two or three. I can't do a big gradient like I normally would do. Oh, the choices. I can't really go with a blue leaf though. I kind of like the idea of a blue leaf. And then, hmm, okay. And then let me grab oh, the other tray. We go with like this blue leaf. We could go with like a pink flower. I like that colour and that colour. And maybe that colour is a dark. Yeah, I, look, I think I'm onto something here now. Um, that's this one for the darker colour. Let's swatch it next to it so we know. That's the darkest. 
Um, and then our mid tone would be this one. And our light tone would be this one. You see, that works really well, but I've also just... I like these two to, together, and maybe that one is a darkest colour. Let me try that one. I do like them two together. Is this one darker? It's more pinky. The other one was a pinky red. This is a bit more pinky. Um, and... This one next to it. Okay. What are we going to do? <laughs> what are we going to do? I think the greens are out. I think I'm going to have to go with either blue and this sort of purple pink or the red pink. Okay, let's give this a go. I'll just move all this stuff out of the way. And I will zoom you all in.
All right, guys, that is our completed page. I love how soft and delicate this palette came out. I'm glad we didn't go with those bright greens. Um, now, they do look a little bit lighter on the page. I don't know if it was just that I wasn't using as hard a pressure as I normally do. Um, and you can always layer over the top if you wanted to, to get that um, more vibrancy. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do a background or not. I do, it does look a little bit empty to me. Um, and I don't like this little sentence here. I was thinking of covering it up with like a circular border. Um, now, I don't know if I want to like cut out uh, maybe some scrapbooking paper and make that as a border. Um, I was thinking of like a gold metallic or a silver metallic paint border. I mean, black would cover it up really well, but black would be a bit too bold for this um, soft, delicate palette. So I think maybe silver, I think would probably go best, but we do have a gold key. Gold and silver don't really mix too well. Probably gold would be better, but I don't know if it's gonna cover up the writing. Um, have I got a stencil that will cover up? Like, mm, I don't want anything really bold. So Distress Ink would cover over it, but I'd have to do really dark colors. So I will have a think on that one. If I do end up doing a background or covering that up, I will add a picture in here. Otherwise, I just want to say a thank you again to Lawrence King Publishing for sending me out this beautiful gift. And it has been a joy to celebrate 10 years of Joanna Basford, 10 years of adult colouring, um, not only Joanna Basford's beautiful work, but also this wonderful community um, that she has helped to grow as well. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye for now.